Josh Allen has restructured his contract to open up like $17 million. Right, Way to go, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Josh. Bills Mafia, what's up? It's Matt Collins. Officially signed the contract. It's time to get to work and do what we do best, and that's put wins on tape. Bills Mafia, Curtis Samuel here. I'm excited. I can't wait to get to it. It's going to be a lot of dancing. I need the energy. I love what I seen from y'all. The excitement is only going to get better this year. Let's go. Let's turn up. The Buffalo Bills coming into the offseason were in a very interesting spot. Last season, they finished the year as a top six offense in a top three defense, not really needing to get much better. They just needed to put it all together and go out there and win football games That when it mattered the most in the playoffs, right? Now, we knew right away they were going to have to make moves, but their moves were going to be limited. Now, right away to start the offseason, Josh Allen took a massive pay cut, which freed up about $16 million of cap space. So at that point in time, I was like, oh, okay, the Bills might actually go out and make some really good moves to improve their team. However, they haven't really done that just yet, but they have added some guys I really do like to their team. And I do think these pickups... Um, over the past couple of weeks here are going to really help their team next season now before we jump into the video before we break down every single signing and you know what they add to the team make sure you guys do me a favor and comment down below a letter grade for the bills so far this offseason i also do want to say i don't think they're anywhere close to being finished they still have a lot of work to do in free agency and there's a lot of big names left on the market now, with that being said, give me a letter grade so far. What do they need to do next? And also, subscribe for more Bills content for the rest of the season. Let's get right into the video. Now, the first big addition that the Buffalo Bills made was signing Curtis Samuel. This dude is an absolute dog. Okay, now they did lose Gabe Davis this offseason, which opened up a massive hole in their offense, their wide receiver room. Curtis Samuel is the perfect fit for Josh Allen in this football team. Now, during his final season back in 2020 with Carolina, he posted 77 catches for over 851 yards, which are both still career highs uh, in his career so far, right? Along with three touchdowns. Now, the good thing about this pickup, guys, is the guy who was calling plays that season for the Carolina Panthers is now the Bills' offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. Now, he did have his interim uh, tag removed and is now the full-time guy here in Buffalo. And I think the number one thing he wanted to do was pair up his guy, Curtis Samuel, with Josh Allen. Like I said, Curtis Samuel, an absolute dog. And I think this could be the first year Cur Curtis Samuel goes over that 1,000-yard mark. Also, another amazing thing about Curtis Samuel is he was used as a runner as well back in that 2020 season. You look at his stats, 41 carries, 200 yards, two touchdowns, averaging 4.9 yards per carry. The man has been electric on the ground, and I don't doubt at all that Joe Brady will find ways to get this man the football in open space and watch him work. The man is a, a wizard when it comes to breaking tackles, getting up the field, and making football plays. I love this addition, but let's deep dive into it a little bit more. Now, the first thing we're going to look at here is yards per pass. And they were actually top 10 in the NFL. But when we go over to Curtis Samuel and look at his numbers, his average in his career is 10.7, right? Over 317 catches, 3,300 yards, 22 touchdowns, and also 10.7 yards per reception as well. We go down to his running stats. 121 carries over 715 yards seven touchdowns on the ground as well with 5.9 yards per carry so not only are you adding a guy to this team who can come in right away and be a day one starting wide receiver but you're also adding a guy in the backfield as well who can spot um you know a james cook right come in add versatility add a new dynamic to this team that desperately needed um you know more unpredictability right now Usually the Bills had a guy like James Cook who would actually do it a, a lot of different things, and I do like James Cook. But now that you have Curtis Samuel, you can line him up in a bunch of different spots, and he just adds a new dynamic to this team that they haven't had um, in a very long time. Now, they also ranked uh, number 9 in completion percentage, number uh, 10 in pass yards per game, but number 25 in interception percentage. Now, I don't know if this is a Josh Allen thing. Um, it's it's got to be a Josh Allen thing. And I'll tell you why. Because they ranked number one last year in sack percentage, which means their, their old line did a really good job keeping him safe in the pocket for the majority of the time. I feel like Josh Allen just made some uncalculated risks at times. So I feel like if Josh Allen can stop throwing so many interceptions, 
And I, listen, I'm not putting it all on Josh Allen, but now that you have a, a really, really, really good route runner in Curtis Samuel, this is going to be a lot easier for him not to force passes and actually have guys open rather than forcing a tight throw. However, with that being said, Curtis Samuel wasn't the only wide receiver the Bills added. They also added former Falcons and Raiders wide receiver, Matt Collins. Now, this guy is massive 6'4 frame, big body, is an amazing catch radius, right? If you throw it up there, he'll most likely go up and get it, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations. Now, this is something that the Bills needed, a red zone threat, a guy who can come in and make big plays on big downs. Fourth and four, you're going to see him run a little bit of a stick route fit into the zone and just this is what he does right he sees this linebacker blitz now originally i think he was going to be running a, a uh, you know an out corner but notices the corner's blitzing he's someone that can just make smart plays on his toes and not have to think about it too much which is very very good to have in buffalo with josh allen who can extend plays but let's uh, deep dive into a little bit more why he's going to be a good fit now, actually, before we deep dive into a little bit more about Matt Collins, do me a favor, guys, hit the like button just so we can get this video out to more Bills fans around the world, but also subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's free, it doesn't cost anything, and I'm going to be covering the Bills for the rest of the season. So right away, we notice 6'4", 221 pounds, is 30 years old, a veteran, but it's a low risk, potentially high reward for one season. Now, over his career, 131 catches, over 1,600 yards, and 10 touchdowns, right? Last season didn't play too well but listen who would in this falcons offense last year they were terrible so don't even look at this year look at this year man 57 catches 690 yards and four touchdowns back-to-back -to -back seasons with four touchdowns i think matt collins can come over here and add a red zone threat to this josh allen led team and i think he can be highly productive in terms of getting some more touchdowns in the air now last season like we said the Bills had one of the best offenses in football. They didn't really need to improve too much, but since they lost Gabe Davis, they needed to go out here and add a receiver. You know, you add a Curtis Samuel type, and now you add a Matt Collins type, which gives you even more versatility. So now you have a, a really good route runner, a gadget guy in Curtis Samuel. You have your main target, Stefan Diggs, who may or may not be traded soon, right? We don't know. Uh, and then Matt Collins. I think they have three different types of wide receivers, and they all fit the system really, really well. And then we had them go out and pick up a linebacker, which I really like. Nicholas Morrow is a guy who has been really consistent over his last three seasons and someone who deserves another shot on another team. Nicholas Morrow is a guy who step in right away, maybe won't be a day one starter, but will be one of the best backup linebackers in the NFL. And the best thing I love about Nicholas Morrow, no ego, loves the game of football, and just wants to win football games, right? There's a lot of guys in the NFL who care about the money, who don't really care about the playing, just want their money, want their bag, right? Nicholas Morrow is a guy who loves the game of football and just wants to win games right big time player big no no ego at all but a big time player off the bench who can come in and be a day one starter if you need him to be now with that being said if a guy like let's just say matt milano isn't ready to start the season you have a day one starter but if he is ready to start the season you probably have the best linebacker coming off the bench in the nfl and this is huge let's break break down some of his stats as he just waits beautiful read just sits right in his zone gets an easy interception let's break down some of his stats now, Nicholas Morrow is a guy who has been relatively healthy throughout his career, played a lot of games in each season, and is a guy who's extremely versatile. Now, when you look at his past three seasons, 95 tackles while missing two games, 116 tackles while playing the entire season, and then 78. So, I mean, he was on pace for 100 tackles in each one of these seasons. He probably easily could have got there if he played all 17 games, right? But the major thing I want you guys to notice here is look at his career stats. 465 tackles, 334 of those were solo, but also seven sacks, three forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries, three interceptions, 27 pass deflections, and 41 and a half run stuff he can do it all he can get to the quarterback he can drop back in his own he can run stuff he can tackle the man can do it all and to have him as a backup linebacker on this defense right here Nicholas Morrow right a lot of people are saying Matt Milano might not be ready for the start of the season or whatnot uh, but this would be a perfect replacement at least for the time being and then you have Dorian Williams as well I love this linebacker core right here and I think Nicholas Morrow is one of the most underrated additions to a football team than anyone else in free agency and when you look at their defense I'll make sure 
to fix this for you but look at their defense they rank number 29 in yards allowed per rush right we go back to Nicholas Morrow 41 and a half run stuffs this is the absolute dream fit here for the Bills defensively uh, for a team that was so good defensively in, in totality last year they just got even better and nobody is really talking about it and I have no idea why now I want you guys to do me a favor now knowing what you know grade this signing I'm gonna give it an A plus man they made an unbelievable addition here and nobody's talking about it for whatever reason and then just yesterday they they added a guy in Casey Tuhill who is flying again way under the radar this is a good addition a guy who can get to the quarterback actually did it five times last season kind of breaking out as a edge uh you know a depth edge rusher and he's someone who I really do like to become not a full-time player but someone that you know really builds Bills Mafia starts to fall in love with I just think he's that type of player as um you know he just does a good job um, you know rushing the quarterback getting pressure and you know also getting some run stuffs as well as you see it right there getting into the backfield again you're adding guys who bring versatility and that, that's what I think is so special about what the Bills have done this offseason you had Nicholas Morrow guy could do everything right Casey Tuo not only can he get to the quarterback but can stop the run in the backfield as well uh, screams off the edge on this play um, get some pressure boom right now this is not case two the case casey two is right here now watch the tenacity of casey two -O. boom let's get around the edge let's chase deshaun watson watson a very fast quarterback right looks like he could break out for a big run here up the left side and boom beautiful dive by uh, from behind gets him down for maybe a gain of one but Casey Tuhill is an athletic freak could keep up with quarterbacks and a perfect guy to have on your football team now when we look at his career numbers 80 tackles over I'm gonna say three seasons he didn't really play at all in his first uh, rookie season so 80 tackles in basically three years seven sacks uh, three four or uh, fumble recoveries He's been really, really solid. Also, nine run stuffs in the past two years. I feel like Casey Tuhill is such a nice addition, right? When you really look at it, they had no depth off the edge um, outside of AJ Epinesa and Greg Rousseau and Vaughn Miller. Adding Casey Tuhill gives you immediate depth, a guy who can rotate in and be a difference maker from day one. They also need a lot more things to go right for them, right? So they've also added Mitch Trubisky, a good backup quarterback, probably one of the best backup quarterbacks. I, I believe he actually used to be here in um, in Buffalo a, a while ago. Let me go check, check real quickly just because... Um, I, I don't want to be completely wrong here, but I, I'm pretty sure he's actually coming back to the Bills. Yeah, he played with the Bills one season in 2021. That's a fine addition. But with that being said, they still need to make some moves, man. We need a backup defensive tackle, some more nickel corner depth, some safety depth, right? Do we think Cam Lewis is going to be that guy who takes a major step up? I don't know, man. They lost Jordan Poyer. They lost Micah Hyde. Obviously, they believe in Taylor Rapp, um, a guy they signed. Um, you have Ky Kyer Elam. I think he takes a major jump up this year. Uh, but obviously, there's moves that need to be made. And they need to be made, you know, sooner rather than later. Offensively, need some more wide receiver depth. I like Stefan Diggs, but will he be here next season? Who knows? I think Justin Short is a guy who can really break out next year as well. Um, we'll see what happens in that, in that case. I think Khalil Shakir is a guy who's going to... Uh, snap next year Curtis Samuel I like him I mean I like what they've done but there's still a lot of work to do David Edwards probably going to be a massive uh, you know contributor this year as well they got some work to do though let me know what you guys think they need to do next hit the like button subscribe if you're new join the family and I'll see you guys in the next Bills update let me know if you guys want a part two and I'll make sure to drop it more draft coverage co uh, more draft coverage as well so make sure you guys stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Now, the one thing you're going to notice about Mike Edwards, he is the ultimate team player. You know, in the NFL, there is a difference between guys who just want the money and guys who love the game of football, right? Mike Edwards is a football player you know phenom right this guy loves to play loves to win and that's the only thing he cares about he doesn't care about signing these four years 70 million dollar deals he just wants to play football and that's the big thing about mike edwards that i love hard worker wants to win and will do whatever it takes to win now over his five-year career has already won two super bowls comes into the buffalo bills team who are missing two safeties in jordan poyer and micah hyde will come in be a day one veteran locker room leader a day one starter but also a guy who can help some younger guys develop you look at a guy like cam lewis who you know quite frankly just not ready i don't think he's that guy maybe he could be in the future but mike edwards will you know come in day one and be that guy you need over the top right 
Now, over his five-year career, over 235 tackles, 157 of those are solo, and he also has three sacks, a forced fumble, four fumble recoveries, and eight interceptions to a to go along with 26 pass deflections. This is the guy you want playing deep safety, you know, breaking up passes and getting into, you know, passing lanes, right? Getting interceptions, bringing it the other way. He also has um, three touchdowns as well defensively, just the guy you want on your football team, right? And specifically, when you look at this Buffalo Bills defense from last season, they were really, really good, right? Um, in terms of sack percentage, interception percentage, pass yards allowed per game, uh, yards allowed per pass attempt, right? They had some issues in terms of uh, completion percentage allowed at times, but at the end of the day, Mike Edwards is an upgrade from what they had. This is a good signing, right? Not only do you bring in that championship pedigree in Mike Edwards, but you also replace a guy that you loved in Jordan Poyer, a guy that you loved in Micah Hyde, this dude is the perfect fit for this Buffalo Bills defense, right? And I feel like over the offseason, throughout what they've done so far has gone way under the radar for no reason. I'm Like I said, when the full breakdown comes out, you're going to hear me talk so well about not only Curtis Samuel, Matt Collins, and um, you know Nicholas Morrow, Casey Tuhill they picked up yesterday, and now Mike Edwards. They have done such an amazing job building up this team, bringing in some underrated players, but there is still work to do from here, right? There needs to be some more defensive tackle depth. There needs to be another nickel coming in here. They lost a lot of depth in free agency, uh, special teamers. That is something they're going to need to fix. But Mike Edwards fixes your big hole, fixes your big hole, right? Fills that big hole of that safety position, right? Him and Taylor Rapp are going to take it over, right? And then you have Brazil Douglas, who is one of the most underrated DBs in football. Uh, you have Christian Benford, who they like, the former sixth round pick. Teron Johnson, Kyer Elam, right? Linebacker core looks really good. Uh, Terrell Bernard, uh, Nicholas Morrow, Dorian Williams. And then the front four, love the depth over there as well, man. I love what the Bills are doing. They're only getting better from here. And Mike Edwards, a phenomenal fit for what they're trying to do here in Buffalo. And could be a guy that can come in, be a locker room leader, and push them over the hump. Let me know what you guys think, though. Subscribe if you're new. Join the family. And if you guys want that full breakdown, like I said, 200 likes. Join the family. And I'll see you guys in the